Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 275. Praise now, creative mind, maker of earth and heaven. Glory and power to him belong. Joy of the sun and skies, strength where the hills arise. So let us praise with joy and song. Hymn number 275. Scriptural this morning will be given by Amanda from Missouri. John, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. First Peter. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, to whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious, ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that 
whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. For so is the will of God, that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let us have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 123. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who to God for your refuge have fled, to you to who to God for your refuge have fled. Hymn number 123.
Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed this morning's, you missed a really good one. So check it out on our website, plainfieldcs.com. Also on Sundays at 11, we have a Sunday school for children, which is held via a teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend. So please call the church and get the number and your child will be most welcome at our Sunday school. Every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. we have a testimony meeting where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And for all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube, and you can find us on Soundbook, Facebook, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Everything's Google these days. And you can listen to our service on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone via a teleconference number that we provide. I'd like to point out an article written by Mary Baker Eddy that is featured on our website entitled, What Christmas Means to Me. This is a very appropriate article for this season and something I would recommend to everyone. And next Saturday morning, we will have another Bible study session. So check the website for questions and please join us next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for a rousing study of the Bible. <clears throat> everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Nancy from New Jersey. 22, Health and Peace Gained. About nine years ago, I was drawn to Christian science by a relative whose many afflictions had given place to health and harmony and whose loving gratitude was reflected in every word and deed. The thought came to me, God indeed healeth all our diseases. My first reading of Science and Health was without understanding. I was full of darkness and gloom, and it was laid aside for a time. The good seed had been sown, however, and ere long the reading was resumed, and with such interest that my afflictions disappeared like mist before the morning sun. Asthma, thought to be hereditary, neuralgia in an aggravated form, and besides these, the tobacco and liquor habit of many years standing left me. Bless the Lord. He sent his word and healed me. For the reading of science and health brought to my consciousness the truth that makes free. S. Shellman, Georgia. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 22 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. The subject, God, the only cause and creator. The golden text is from Acts. God that made the world and all things therein hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. 
The responsive reading is from Genesis and Romans. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And there was a strife between the burden of Abram's cattle and the burden of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Florence from Georgia will read from the Bible. Psalm. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Colossians. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Galatians for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Ephesians I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind, one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another 
even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Matthew And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Luke then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press. And it was told him by certain, which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. John then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Acts Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. First Timothy I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, 
and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Ephesians Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall be he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lillian from New Jersey will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Father Mother is a name for deity, which indicates his tender relationship to his spiritual creation. As the apostle expressed it in words which he quoted with approbation from a classic poet, for we are also his offspring. <clears throat> it should be thoroughly understood that all men have one mind, one God and Father, one life, truth, and love. Mankind will become perfect in proportion as this fact becomes apparent. War will cease and the true brotherhood of man will be established. <clears throat> With one Father, even God, the whole family of man would be brethren and with one mind, and that God, or good, the brotherhood of man would consist of love and truth and have unity of principle and spiritual power, which constitute divine science. The supposed existence of more than one mind was the basic error of idolatry. This error assumed the loss of spiritual power the loss of the spiritual presence of life as infinite truth without an unlikeness, and the loss of love of ever-present and universal. The world believes in many persons, but if God is personal, there is but one person because there is but one God. His personality can only be reflected, not transmitted. God has countless ideas, and they all have one principle and parentage. God gives a lesser idea of himself for a link to the greater, and in return, the higher always protects the lower. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father. And blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. Students are advised by the author to be charitable and kind not only towards differing forms of religion and medicine, but to those who hold these different, differing opinions. Let us be faithful in pointing the way through Christ as we understand it, but let us also be careful always to judge righteous judgment and never to condemn rashly. Who shall ever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. That is, fear not 
that he will smite thee again for thy forbearance. If ecclesiastical sects or medical schools turn a deaf ear to the teachings of Christian science, then part from these opponents as did Abraham when he parted from Lot, and say in thy heart, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Immortals, or God's children in divine science, are one harmonious family. But mortals, or the children of men, in material sense, are discordant and oft times false brethren. The erroneous belief that life, substance, and intelligence can be material ruptures the life and brotherhood of man at the very outset. Whatever reflects mind, life, truth, and love is spiritually conceived and brought forth. But the statement that man is conceived and evolved both spiritually and materially, or by both God and man, contradicts this eternal truth. All the vanity of the ages can never make both these contraries true. Divine science lays the ax at the root of the illusion that life or mind is formed by or is in the material body, and science will eventually destroy this illusion through the self-destruction of all error and the beautified understanding of the science of life. The belief that pain and pleasure, life and death, holiness and unholiness mingle in man, that mortal, material man is the likeness of God and is himself a creator, is a fatal error. Matter is neither intelligent nor creative. The tree is not the author of itself. Sound is not the originator of music, and man is not the father of man. Cain very naturally concluded that if life was in the body and man gave it, man had the right to take it away. This incident shows that the belief of life and matter was a murderer from the beginning. Jesus uttered things which had been secret from the foundation of the world. Since material knowledge usurped the throne of the creative divine principle, insisted on the might of matter, the force of falsity, the insignificance of spirit, and proclaimed an anthropomorphic God. Jesus acknowledged no ties of the flesh. He said, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Again he asked, who is my mother? and who are my brethren, implying that it is they who do the will of his father. We have no record of his calling any man by the name of father. He recognized spirit God as the only creator and therefore as the father of all. In science, man is the offspring of spirit. The beautiful, good, and pure constitute his ancestry. His origin is not like that of mortals and brute instinct, nor does he pass through material conditions prior to reaching intelligence. Spirit is his primitive and ultimate source of being. God is his father, 
and life is the law of his being. Spirit duly feeds and clothes every object as it appears in the line of spiritual creation, thus tenderly expressing the fatherhood and motherhood of God. A material world implies a mortal mind and man a creator. The scientific divine creation declares immortal mind and the universe created by God. Father, eternal life, the one mind, the divine principle commonly called God. Mother, God, divine and eternal principle, life, truth, and love. The harmony and immortality of man are intact. We should look away from the opposite supposition that man is created materially and turn our gaze to the spiritual record of creation, to that which should be engraved on the understanding and heart with the point of a diamond and the pen of an angel. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number nine. All glory be to God most high, and on the earth be peace. The angels sang in days of yore, the song that ne'er shall cease, till all the world knows peace. Hymn number nine.
you can tell me why a trillion stars are in the sky why ten thousand starlings fly in perfect synchronicity why there is a thing called joy and beauty a will to live and consciousness you haven't scratched the surface until you know why. Until you can tell me why we're drawn to understand the why. Why we look for answers high above, beyond the galaxy. And in golden sunsets in the mighty rain In mountains grand and glorious You haven't scratched the surface Until you know why Oh, the answer doesn't come with observation Or a word Intellectual explanation. Simply put, there is a cause behind creation. The answer is because it's all because the first and only cause, and that is why a trillion stars are in. Sky, why ten thousand starlings fly in perfect synchronicity? Why there is a thing called joy and beauty, a will to live and consciousness. We've only scratched the surface. And now you know why. Let's now sing hymn number 153. In Thee, my God and Savior, forevermore the same, my spirit hath rejoicing, for holy is Thy name. My soul doth magnify the Lord, sing all in glad accord. Praise Him who lifts the lowly, for faithful is His word. I magnify and bless Thee, for faithful is Thy word. Hymn number 153.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. Amen.